بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم صلاة والتسليما يلقاني بمقام أمير الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا محمدا رسول الله خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين صل اللهم وسلم وبارك على هذا النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته الغر الميمين أما بعد Respected ulama, elders, brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I did prepare a, a talk for, But I first want to speak about these verses that he recited Because wallahi the way he recited them you know, they just lit up my heart. And why I want to speak about these few verses, and I'm going to connect it to what I wanted to speak about. Because in these verses, in these verses, there are three miracles. Or I could say, this was the platform from which the three miracles were launched. And how in need are we of a miracle today? Allahu Akbar. So let us just look at, inshallah, I've taken three verses of Surah Al Imran, verse 35, verse 36, and verse 37. The last three verses that uh, Qari Mujahid recited, Jazallah Khair. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, about the wife of Imran. The wife of Imran. Now, who is Imran? Imran, he is the father of Maryam. And his wife, Hanna, we know her as Hanna. The Jews call her Hannah. The Catholics call her Saint Anne. She is the mother of, of Maryam. Now, in as far as, for me, the most strongest opinion... They were from Bani Lawi. They were not from the tribe of Yehuda. They were from Bani Lawi. Meaning, they were from the priestly class. Because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that designated Harun, Nabiullah Harun, to be what we would call the leader of the ulama of Bani Israel. He was like Shaykh al-Islam for Bani Israel. Nabiullah Harun, the brother of, of Musa, alayhi salatu wassalam. And, and they were Levites. They came from Bani Lawi. Bani Lawi. Lawi being one of the twelve sons of Nabi Yaqub, alayhi salatu wassalam. Ribiun, Simeon, Naftali, Zebulun, Ashr, Asakir, Dan, Jad, Lawi, Yehuda, Yusuf and Binyamin. So Lawi, all of the ulama that were in charge of the sacrifices that were made at Masjid Al-Aqsa at that time, they were in charge of all the tuqus, of all the rituals and the sacrifices that were made. Whether it was in the time of Ahdul Qudat, the time of the judges, or in the kingdom of Nabiullah Dawood, or when Nabi Sulaiman expanded Masjid al-Aqsa. It's always been the Levites from the time of Mount Sinai and receiving the Torah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the designation of Nabiullah Harun. It's always been Bani Lawi that have been the tribe of the ulama of Bani Israel. And in fact, when Yusha bin Nun, Nabi Yusha, Joshua, when he took Bani Israel over the Jordan River and conquered Ariha, Ariha, which is Jerry, actual fact, archaeologically, it is considered to be the oldest city in the world. The city of Jericho, of Ariha. And when Bani Israel settled themselves in Al Ard al Maqaddasa in the Holy Land, which Allah had written for them with strict conditions, 
that they should worship Allah and Allah alone, and they should keep all the statutes and commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they went against, if they worshipped other gods or went against and transgressed the laws and commandments of Allah, then the prophecy goes, the land will vomit you out like it vomited out the nations that came before you. And of course that came to pass. Twice. تُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ They committed mischief twice in the earth and Allah destroyed them from the land. The last time being in the time of the Romans under uh, Titus the son of Vespasian in the year 70 and then again in 134 by Emperor Hadrian after the Bar Kokhba revolt when the Jews were massacred and driven out of the land of specifically of Judea and that's when the great diaspora began and at the end of those four verses in Surah Al-Isra, Allah SWT says, Asa Rabbukum and Yarhamakum. It might be that Allah will show mercy to you. It might be after Allah let you live in the land twice, and twice you caused corruption and mischief, and twice you were evicted. Asa Rabbukum and Yarhamakum. It might be that Allah will show mercy to you. Where did the mercy come? When did the mercy come? Wa ma arsalnaka. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ When Allah SWT sent Muhammad وسلم, that was the door of mercy that he opened for Bani Israel to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they refused. In, any, in actual fact, of the Ahbar, only three embraced Islam in Medina. Ka'b al-Ahbar, Abdullah bin, bin Salam, and Al-Mukhayriq. The Prophet said, وسلم, if ten of their rabbis, of their ulama, had embraced Islam, they would have all embraced Islam. But only three of the Ahbar and some of the Awam. Most of them, most of them turned away. They were Mu'aridun. They turned their backs on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then at the end, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدَنَا And if you come back, in other words, after those two times, the first one being, you could say, of the two kingdoms, was the kingdom of خَمَمْلَخَ خَمِ أُخِدَتْ Al-Mamlakatul Mawahida, the United Kingdom of Nabi Allah Dawood. Muslim Prophet. I was doing a course on Jerusalem studies, and the question arose: when was the first Islamic conquest of Jerusalem? One of the students put up their hands and said, In the time of Sayyidina Umar. I said, No, that's wrong. The first Islamic conquest of Bayt al Maqdis was at the hands of Nabi Allah Dawood. Is he not a Muslim prophet? Bala. Nay, no, certainly he is. And after him, Nabiullah Sulaiman. And their kingdom lasted for 77 years. Their kingdom lasted for? For 77 years. From 1008 to 931 BC. 77 years. And then, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala evicted them from the land and they went into exile in Babylon after the destruction of Nebuchadnezzar, Bukhta Nasr, in 587. And they were in exile for 70 years. And then they made Tawbah. And then Allah SWT sent Cyrus the Great, the Persian emperor. And Allah SWT creates asbab. Who are musabbibul asbab. He is the cause of all causes. And Cyrus the Great defeated the Neo-Babylonians. And then he restored the Jews, which are the remnants of Bani Israel, Restored them back to the Holy Land and rebuilt Masjid Al-Aqsa. Even sponsored the rebuilding of Masjid Al-Aqsa at the hands of Zerubabil and Nehemiah and Uzair, Ezra. Uzair, Ezra. To whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regave via inspiration the Torah that had been lost. So he gave so many chances. And then eventually the so-called gathering of Israel happened under the Ad-Dawla al khashmuniyya the Hasmonean Empire, which was the rebellion of the Maccabees in 167 BC, and then the Hasmonean dynasty was established in 141, and that lasted until 63 BC, another 77 years. Now, even amongst the Zionists today, they say that they are afraid of Laanatul Aqd al 
the curse, the curse of the eighth decade. Because the first two kingdoms, the first two dollars, only lasted 77 years. And that was with the permission of Allah. This one was established without the permission of Allah. The Zionist state that exists today was established by mostly atheists. Zeev Jabotinsky, atheist. Theodor Herzl, atheist. David Ben-Gurion, atheist. He said, I quote the Torah a lot. Yet, I do not believe in the God that it postulates. So, this third so-called state, illegitimate state that they've established, was established, number one, without the permission of Allah. Because Allah says, in Uttum, if you come back, and we can take that literally, they came back to the land without permission. The land is waqf. The land is part of an inheritance. The inheritance of our father. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant with him. And promised this land to him. And to his pious offspring. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّةِ قَالَ لَا يَنَالُ عَهْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ He said, what about my progeny? He said, the oppressors will not be the recipients of my covenant. In other words, it's only the believing spiritual descendants of Ibrahim. And who are they? The of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِنَّ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِإِبْرَاهِيمَ لَلَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَهَذَا النَّبِيُّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Indeed, those who have most right over Abraham are those who follow Abraham. It's not about blood. It's about belief, about faith. حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا We say it every day. إِنِّي وَجَهْتُ وَجِيَّ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا Every day we say it. Dual istiftah. Oh Allah, I turn my face to the originator of the heavens and the earth. Hanifan Musliman. Hanifan means coming from the word Hanf, which means al -mail. The one that turns away from the worship of everyone and everything besides Allah. Musliman, submitting and surrendering to Allah. And who is that? Ibrahim. Every day we connect ourselves to our father, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Ma kana Ibrahimu Yahudiyan wala Nasraniyan wala kin kana Hanifan Musliman, وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Abraham was not a Jew. Just think about it. Just think about it, logically. The word Jew, where does it come from? It comes from the name Yehuda, which is one of the twelve sons of Jacob. So Yehuda, the son of Jacob, Yaqub, who is the son of Ishaq, Isaac, who is the son of Abraham. What's the religion of the Jews? Judaism. Well, I'm talking about the Jews today, not then. That's why, technically speaking, the first Jew was a Muslim. Because Yehuda, Yehuda, when he was standing with his 11 brothers at the deathbed of their father, Am kuntum shuhada, id hadar Yaqub al maut, id qala li bani, ma ta'buduna min ba'di. قَالُوا نَعْبُدُ إِلَهَكَ وَإِلَهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقِ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Or were you there when death presented itself to Jacob? When he said to his sons, What are you going to worship after me? They said, again, the twelve. I just mentioned their names. Ribiun, Simeon, Naftali, Zebulun, Asher, Asakir, Dan, Jad, Lawi, Yehuda, Yusuf, Binyamin. All 12 of them were standing around. Nabi Yaqub, Israel, that's his nickname. Israel. Just like Musa's nickname is Kalimullah. Isa's nickname, Kalimatullah. Muhammad's nickname, Rasulullah. They're standing at the deathbed of their father. And their father is asking them, What is he asking them? What job are you going to work when I'm gone? What house are you going to own? What car are you going to drive? No. Ma ta'buduna min ba'd. You're going to worship after me. They said, we're going to worship your God. And the God of your ancestors. The God of Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac. What God? Wa nahnu lahu muslimun. And we are to him Muslim. What does that mean? Submitting and surrendering. So Yehuda was a Muslim. The first Jew was a Muslim. Like that, Allahu Akbar. They won't set me like it, but tough luck. Qul mutu bi 
die by your rage. Die by your rage. So every day we connect ourselves to Nabi Ibrahim. We are the inheritors of the covenant of Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. Hanifan musliman wa ma ana min al mushrikeen. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. La sharika lahu wa bidhalika umirtu wa ana wa ana min al muslimin. Just like the 12 sons of Jacob said, just like the 12 disciples of Jesus said. Man ansari ilallah, who are my helpers calling to Allah? Isa said to them, the 12. Nahnu ansar Allah, we are the helpers calling to Allah. Amanna billah, we believe in Allah. Washhada bi anna muslimun, and bear witness that we are all muslimun, submitting and surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah Taala says, "Inna awla nas bi Ibrahim la ladina tabu," indeed, those who have most right over Abraham are those who follow Abraham. Wa hadha nabiyu, not a nabiya. مفعول به منسوب علامة نصبه الفتحة الظاهرة على آخره. No, a nabiyu, a nabiyu, فاعل. مرفوع علامة رفيع الضمة الظاهرة على آخره. And for those that like a little bit of Nahu, <laughs> says, and this prophet has more right over Abraham. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And those that believe with this prophet, meaning the Ummah of Muhammad When Sayyidina Umar radiallahu wa ta'ala anhu wa arda, when he conquered Jerusalem and the Holy Land, did he divide it up amongst his companions? Abu Ubaidah, there's a piece for you. Khalid, there's a piece for you. No, Allah. The entire land of Al Ard al Maqaddasa, of historical Palestine, is Waqaf. And from the time of Sayyidina Umar, excluding maybe the period when the Crusaders from 1099 to 1186, apart from that, that entire land of historical Palestine remained waqaf until about 1836. It was almost impossible to purchase property or land in Palestine up until about 1836. When Muhammad Ali Basha, who was an Albanian Ottoman commander who came with his troops and took over Egypt under the suzerainty of the Ottoman Empire, but he ruled over Egypt. And then he had a fallout with the Sultan. And then for 10 years, from 1831 to 1841, he ruled over Sham, Syria, and Ardu Palestine and the land of Palestine. And it was during this time that Moses Montefiore, the most famous Jew in the world, a philanthropist, went to Muhammad Ali Basha in Egypt and said to him, you know, sell us some land. Now, Moses Montefiore was the brother-in-law of Nathan Rothschilds. His wife, Judith, was the sister of Hannah Cohen, Hannah Cohen, the wife of Nathan Rothschilds, the son of Mayor Rothschilds, the father of the enormous banking empire. And he went to Muhammad Ali Basha and he said, I will create a stock bank in which we will place one million pounds sterling. Can you imagine how much that was worth in 1836? Just to sell us a little piece of land. And so the mutasallim, the tax collector of Jerusalem, his name was Ahmad Agha, al duzari al-Asali. He was the mutasallim, the tax collector. He sold to Moses Montefiore a piece of land on the road from Al-Quds to Khalil, to Habrun, Hebron. And that was where the Jews got their, or the Zionist Jews, let us be clear, the Zionist Jews got their first foot in the door and established their first settlement called Mishkat Sha'ana'anim. 
And from there, the settlements just grew. But by, very interestingly, even though they managed, because the Ottomans then, when they took the land back from Mehmed Ali Basha, in the year 1858, they changed the law code where all the farmers had to register the land that they were working on, but then they would have to serve in the army and they would have to pay taxes. So they didn't do it. And so these absentee landlords, like the Sarsuk family, like the Khuri family, like the Qabani family, like the Nabahani family, which were living in Lebanon. And by the way, the Sarsuk family was a Greek Orthodox family. They were the ones that sold that Marj Abu Amir, the most fertile land in the whole of Palestine, in the Jezreel Valley, they sold it to the Rothschilds, to Edmund the Rothschilds in 1882. But by 1948, only 5.6% of the entire historical Palestine had been sold. Illegitimately. Why? Because it's waqaf. You can't sell waqaf. So the entire historical Palestine, Al-Ard Al-Maqaddasa, belongs to the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam. We need to understand this concept. It's not about nationalism. It's not about, you know, creating a Palestinian national identity. And the Palestinians, by default, of living there are the custodians of that waqaf. But that land belongs to the entire ummah of Muhammad And we are all responsible for it. All of us. Bilastithna, without any exception. So the person that says, oh no, it's... You know, nothing to do with me. This is a political issue. La wallah. Hadi khiyana. This is treachery. This is total and utter treachery. We are all responsible for the protection of this land and for the people living in that land. And so, when it comes to the mas'ala of of al-ard al-maqaddasa, of Bayt al-Maqdis, of Masjid al-Aqsa. This, Jamaat al-Muslimin, this is the greatest qadiyah, the greatest issue of our time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us all and exposing the whole world with what is going on right now in, in Palestine. So, Hanna, which is the wife of, of Imran, Imran, being from Bani Lawi, is a Levite. He was one of the chief teachers, ulama, in Masjid al-Aqsa. But he died when, when Hannah was pregnant with, with Maryam. And Allah SWT begins the story in verse number 35. Whenever you see id, it means udhkur, call to mind, remember the story, as if it happened. In other words, this is not just a fairy tale. This is how it happened. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ إِمْرَأَةُ عِمْرَانِ And when the wife of Imran said, رَبِّ إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِي When she said, Oh my Lord, I pledge that which is in my womb. She was making a pledge. I pledge that which is in my womb. مُحَرَّرًا Voluntarily. Nobody's forced me to. فَتَقَبَّلْ مِنِّي so accept it from me. Indeed, you are all hearing and you are all knowing. Verse 36. فَلَمَّا وَضَعَتْهَا When she gave birth to her, meaning Mary, Maryam, قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنثَى She said, Oh my Lord, I have given birth to a girl. Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at. And Allah knows better that which, we gave, which she gave birth to. It's not like she's informing Allah. Allah knows better. Allah knows all things. But why is she saying this? Because only boys were accepted for, for service in Masjid al-Aqsa. Not girls. وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى That's why she said a boy is not like a girl. They don't accept girls. They only accept boys. So did she then say to herself, well... I made the pledge, when I made the promise to Allah that I was going to give up this child to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his house, in Masjid al-Aqsa, she was obviously expecting that Allah was going to grant her a boy. But now she gets a girl, does she break her pledge? Does she break her covenant? 
Does she think to herself, oh, well, you know, Allah didn't get what I, or give me what I expected from him, so, you know, there goes my promise out the window. La wallah. وَلَيْسَ ذَكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَ وَإِنِّي سَمَيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ And indeed, I name her Maryam. You know what she was saying in that one sentence? Maryam is a Syriac. So you have Aramiya, Aramaic. A form of Aramiya is Syrianiya. The scholars differ. Did Nabi Ibrahim speak Aramiya or did he speak the, the offshoot of Aramiya, Syrianiya? But from that mother language of Aramiya and Syrianiya come both Ibriya and Al Arabiya. Ibriya, which is Hebrew, and Al Arabiya, which is, which is Arabic. So, Maryam in Syrianiya literally means to serve. So, she's saying, Oh Allah, I've given birth to a girl. And girls are not like boys. But I name her the one who serves. As a matter, I've made my promise. Whatever Allah has given me, it's in order that I can fulfill that promise. So I'm not going to break my promise. And so she wrapped Maryam in a blanket and she took Maryam to the steps of Masjid Al-Aqsa and there were all the ulama, the arbab, the rabbis. And among them was who? Was Zakaria alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and she also made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Maryam and her offspring, Isa ibn Maryam, from the shaitan, the accursed one. So Allah accepted her graciously. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted her a good upbringing and made Zakaria to be her guardian. You see, Zakaria was married to Isha. Not Isha. Isha is what we prayed before Taraweeh. E with a Hamza. Isha ending in a ending in a Ain. Isha is Arabic for Elizabeth. So Hannah and Isha were sisters. Elizabeth and Hannah were sisters. So the most appropriate person of all of them to be the kafil, to be the guardian of Maryam in Masjid Al-Aqsa would have been Zakaria, which is the husband of her maternal aunt. And of course, how was this established? By throwing their pins in the rivulet and the pin that would remain, that person would be the guardian. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah is power over all things and Allah chose Zakaria alayhi salatu wasalam to be her guardian. وَكَفَّلَهَا زَكَرِيَا كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَا الْمِحْرَابِ Every time Zakaria entered onto the chamber, he made a chamber for her. In fact, those of you who have been to Masjid al-Aqsa, I tried going there. They interrogated me for 11 hours and sent me back. But uh, for those of you who have been there, there's actually, they show you the place where the chamber, where the mihrab of Sayyidah Maryam actually was. And the only person that had access to Sayyidah Maryam was, was Zakaria. So Allah SWT then says, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَا الْمِحْرَابِ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَ Every time Zakaria entered the chamber, he, find, he found that there was sustenance with her. In one riwaya, fruit out of season. Fruit out of season. No Uber Eats, no Mr. Delivery. No uh, checkers of these guys. You see these guys with new electric bicycles. What's it called? 6060. No 6060. <laughs> oh, Maryam. Oh, Mary. Where did you get this from? I was, you know, speaking about this today with my colleague, uh, Sheikh Samih Jad, Allah Yahfadhu, and uh, we were talking about the fact that when our beloved Prophet Sallallahu went on the Mi'raj and he had his audience with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, did he see Allah or not? And the overwhelming majority of the ulama 
say that he never saw Allah. In fact, Ibn Abbas, which was his own interpretation, said that he saw Allah with his heart. But they all agree that he never saw Allah with his eyes. But the more correct interpretation in terms of the jumhur of the Sahaba and the ulama is that in the hadith of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, when he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi what did you see when you were there? Be beyond the, the, the border of the low tree, the furthest low tree, and you're having your audience with Allah, what did you see? Mada ra'ayt? Qala, ra'aytu nooran anna ara. Said, I saw light. Anna ara. Just like Zakaria said, anna laki hadha. Where did you get this from? So like the Prophet is saying to Abu Dhar, I saw light. How could I see Allah? And Allah said to Nabi Musa, Lan tarani. On the dunya, you'll never see me. And not Musa. Nabi Musa والسلام, never saw Allah SWT. Nor did our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, see Allah SWT. But on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Wujuhu yawma idhin nadira Ila rabbiha nadira On the day of judgment, their faces will be illuminated, looking to the countenance of their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the people have entered Jannah, then Allah will ask the people of Jannah, may Allah make us of them. Are you happy? And they will say, كَيْفَ لَا نَرْضَى وَقَدْ أَعْطَيْتَنَا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ How can we not be pleased when you've given us everything? And then Allah will remove those veils. What veils? حِجَابُهُ nur. On the Mi'raj, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his veil is light. And for Nabi Musa, hijabuhu nar. Another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, his veil is fire. So for Nabi Musa, in the burning bush, the veil was fire. And on the Mi'raj, when our beloved Prophet ﷺ had an audience with Allah SWT, the veil was light. On the day of Qiyamah, Allah will remove all the veils. And then the Prophet said, فَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ الْقَمَرَ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْبَدْرِ And then you will see your Lord, like you see the moon on the night when it is full. May Allah make us of them. Ameen. Ya Maryamu anna laki hadha. So using that same word. Oh Maryam, how did you get this? Qalat huwa min indillah. She said it is from Allah. Inna Allah yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Indeed Allah sustains whoever he wants without any account. Now it was that miracle that got Nabi Zakaria thinking. If Allah can give Maryam Rizq without a sabab, without a cause, surely he can give me and my barren wife Elizabeth a child without a cause. Because she was barren, meaning her womb was dead. And so what did he do? He went in, Fada'a Zakaria Rabba. Zakaria made dua to his Lord and asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angels came and gave him the blessings or gave him the glad tidings of. Yahya, you know what Yahya means? To come alive. Because the, the womb of Isha, of Elizabeth, was dead, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it come alive, and so he was named Yahya. And never before had anybody been named that name except for him, Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam. And that led the path, or that opened the way for the second greatest miracle. After the creation of our father Adam, والسلام, because he was created without father and without mother. And the second greatest miracle being the creation of Nabi Isa. That's what Allah SWT says. In the Isa عند الله كمثل Adam. خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون. The likeness of Jesus by God, by Allah, is the likeness of Adam. He created him from dust and he said to him, Be. And he was. Three miracles. Look at that. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. How in need are we of a miracle today? But I want to tell you this. Qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna min wara'ikum ayyaman There are coming days. There are coming days after me. That you are going to have to face. Meaning us. Here, now. As-sabru fi hinna kal-qabdi ala al-jamr Patience and perseverance in those days will be like holding onto a hot coal. Al-amilu fihinna lahu ajru mithlu khamsin. 
A person who works has true faith and works righteous deeds. In those times, these times of, of fitna, of trial and tribulation, they will have the reward of 50. The Sahaba, the sahaba asked the Prophet Khamsina minna or minhum. 50 of us or 50 of them. The Prophet said, Khamsina minkum. 50 of you. So if we can hold on to this Quran and we connected with that can practice the sunnah of Nabiuna Muhammad khayl anam for every action that we do on the straight path of Allah we can have the reward of 50 of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَتَجِئُوا الْفِتْنَةِ فَتُرَقِّقُوا بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا And the trials will come. كَأَمْوَاجْ Wave after wave. When the next trial comes, it will make the previous one seem insignificant. We had COVID. Then we had LGBTQ plus, minus, whatever the case might be. Now we have what's happening in Gaza. Allah مفرج عن إخواننا في غزة. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exposing the whole world. وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ Let the disbelievers not think for one moment that we give them respite. In Afrikaans, who say Allah? That the khifa al-adrat. Let them not think for one moment, the disbelievers, that we give them respite for their own benefit. We give them respite that they might increase in sin and for them is a humiliating torment. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَذَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَلَى مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ حَتَّى يَمِيزَ الْخَبِيثَ مِنَ الطَّيِّبِ And Allah will never ever leave the believers in the condition that you are in until Allah has first separated the wretched from the righteous. These are the days of separation. And not just that, these are the days, these are the days, أَيَّامُ الْفَصْلِ The days of separation. وَهَذِي أَيَّامُ الْإِسْتِبْدَالِ And these are the days of replacement. Because if we're not going to hold on, if we're not going to walk the straight path, if we're not going to stand up and speak the truth and strive and struggle in the path of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to do away with us and bring us and bring another people to replace us. And if you turn your backs, Allah will replace you with another people and they won't be like you. And they won't be like you. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma thabbitna ya Rabb. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubna ala deenik. Ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif qulubna ala ta'atik. O turner of the hearts, make our hearts steadfast on your deen, ya Allah. O turner of the hearts, make our hearts steadfast on your obedience. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya Rabbil Alameen. Jamaat al-Muslimin, just before I came here, I was reading that the savage, barbaric, genocidal, psychopathic, deranged Zionist forces have now left Khan Yunus. They have pulled out of Khan Yunus and they are getting ready and preparing to invade Rafah. Rafah used to have about 400,000 inhabitants. It now has 1.4 million inhabitants. So understand Gaza, which is 41 kilometers long and 6 to 12 kilometers wide, is made up of 80% refugees from 1948. So in 1948, when those villages were destroyed and those Palestinians were displaced, they had to escape to, to Gaza. And they established eight refugee camps. Jabalia, Nusayrat, Dirbalah, Maghazi, Shati, Khan Yunus, Rafah, and Jabalia. Eight refugee camps. Menachem Begum, after the Six Day War, he said, let's go into Gaza. So that was 1948, when they were displaced to Gaza. 1967, Menachem Begum said, let's go into Gaza, destroy the refugee camps, and drive the Palestinians into the Sinai Desert. It's an old project. Old project. And at this present moment in time, 
population of Gaza is about 2.2 million. 1.9 million are homeless. 70% of the infrastructure, the housing units and the infrastructure in Gaza is being totally decimated, destroyed. I met one of the brothers when they came here. He said to me, it's not 200 masjids. Those 200 masjids are those big masjids. He says, one of those masjids, he says, on average cost them $3 million to build. He said, over a thousand masjids, that including the smaller masjid, in the different harat, in the different neighborhoods, over a thousand masjid have been destroyed. Of the 36 hospitals, you could say that 12 are running partially, partially, just partially. They even destroyed the zoo. They even destroyed, they came with the jarrafat, the bulldozers, and they dug up 16 cemeteries in Gaza. Not even the shuhada, not even the deceased are safe in Gaza. There is no place that is safe in Gaza. Why I'm telling you this is that, and I start with myself, and I make no bones about this. I speak frankly and openly. Our duty as an ummah, in fact, I just heard that Al-Ittihad Al-Alami Li-Ulama Al-Muslimin, the United Organization for the Ulama of the Muslimin of Sunnah Wal Jama'ah, have actually made what they call tanfir, saying that it is compulsory for the Muslims to physically go and liberate Palestine. But the Ummah is Ummah to Miliarain, an Ummah of two billion people. But the Ummah, the Ummah itself is occupied. In fact, the people of Gaza, we can say, are free. The entire Ummah is occupied. And this humiliation that we are suffering from now is because of the fact that we have left that very important principle of fighting for our liberation and for our rights. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبَّنَا اللَّهِ They've been given permission. Those who were fought against, they've been, been given permission to fight. أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ And indeed Allah is most capable of granting them victory. Those who were driven out of their homes without any right. Except for the fact that they said, Allah is our Lord. And that's why our beloved Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I leave you with this, he says, إِذَا تَبَيَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَ Al-Aina is a riba transaction. If you deal in riba, if you deal in riba, وَرَضِيتُمْ بِالزَّرْعِ وَأَخَذْتُمْ بِأَذْنَابِ الْبَقَرِ And you're happy with farming and the holding of the, of the tails of cows. In other words, business. You're dealing in riba, and all you're worried about is pesa for loose, khyalt, mirang. Doing business, ma khyalt. al jihad. And you leave fighting in the path of Allah. Sallat Allahu alaykum dhullan la yanzi'uhu hatta tarji'u ila dinikum. Then Allah will envelop you in an humiliation that He will not remove from you until you return back to your deen. Where are we? Where are we? We can't even enter. Sheikh Mahmoud Hassanat, he said, 57 Muslim countries, and we can't enter a blanket into Gaza, or a bottle of water, or a piece of bread. So we've got a lot of work to do. And Ramadan, Ramadan is the, the springboard. For us to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rabb tubna ila Allah. Wa raja'na ila Allah. Wa nadimna ala ma fa'alna. Wa azamna azman akidan ala annana la na'asillah. We repent to Allah and we return to Allah. And we regret about all the wrong that we have done. And we make a resolution not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite this ummah. May Allah return greatness to this ummah. When is that going to happen? When we make Islam great. When we put Islam before everything and everyone. 
What did Sayyidina Umar, when he came in front of Jerusalem, what did he say to Abu Ubaidah? When Abu Ubaidah said to him, Ya laytikar labist al-abaya, ya laytikar rakibt al-ba'ir. If only you had worn your abaya to cover you. He had, a, he had a thobe on with 17 patches. It's like Abu Ubaidah is saying, you know, Amir al-Mu'mini, when he falls in the city, you know, why do you wear your abaya cover the patches? Why don't you ride on your camel? Your servant is riding on your camel. You're Amir al Mu'minin. They were taking turns. One was reading a hizb, half a juice, riding on the camel. Then after the hizb, they take turns and the other one gets on. When they arrived in Jerusalem, the servant was on said Umar's camel and he was walking. He had his sandals under his arm and he waded through a pool of mud. And there was the, the Sahaba with the patriarch of Jerusalem receiving them on the other side. And they just helped said Umar just to wash off his feet. And then Abu Ubaidah said, Oh, commander of the faithful, if only you had worn your abaya, if only you had ridden on your camel, you're now going to receive the keys to Jerusalem from the patriarch of Jerusalem. Sayyidina Umar said, Ya Abu Ubaidah, law qalaha ghayruka la darabtu bil kaf. He didn't say a fist, he said a kaf. You know, like, like an Ottoman slap. Ay wallah. He said, Ya Abu Ubaidah, nahnu qawmun a'azzana Allahu bil islam. He said, oh, Abu Ubaidah, we are a people that Allah has made great with Islam. Not by being Arab, Harbi, Tamimi, Qasimi, Qurayshi, Azdi, Himyari. No, not by being Arab, not by being Turk, not by being black, not by being white, not by being Malay, not by being Indian, Kokni, Surti, Kalvadia, <laughs> we are a people that Allah has made great with Islam. And every time, every time that we have sought greatness in anything but Islam, Allah has brought us down and humiliated us. We can't, go, we can't go any lower. We can't go any further. We have to come back to basics. We have to unite as an ummah. The believers are nothing save one brotherhood, one sisterhood. We have to come back to La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We have to come back to Kitabullah wa Sunnat Rasulullah. And when we do that, and we make that the most valuable entity in our lives, and we put that first, we put Allah first. And the obedience of Allah first and following the sunnah of a beloved Prophet ﷺ first, Allah is going to put us first. And Allah is going to restore greatness to us. And Allah is going to grant us victory over our enemies. Allahumma suri khwanana al mustadafina fi Gaza. Allahumma at'imhum min ju'a. Allahumma at'imhum min ju'a. Allahumma at'imhum min ju'a. Oh Allah, they are hungry, so feed them, ya Allah. Allahumma aminhum min khawf. Oh Allah, they are full of fear and anxiety, so grant them peace and tranquility, ya Allah. Grant them protection and security, Ya Allah. Allah man suri ikhwanan al-mujahideen fi Gaza. I will help our warriors in, 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 in Gaza, Ya Allah. Allah marmi anhum idha ramaw. Oh Allah, when they throw, when they throw, throw for them, Ya Allah. Wa idha, wa sudda anhum idha rumu. And if they are thrown at, then protect them and shield them, Ya Allah. اللهم عليك بالصهاية ومن دوالهم فإنهم لا يعجزونك. Oh Allah, we ask you to destroy the Zionists and all their supporters and collaborators, for they cannot escape you, Ya Allah. اللهم شتت شملهم. اللهم فرج جمعهم. اللهم لا تحقق لهم غاية ولا ترفع لهم راية. Oh, let them not achieve any of their goals. And Ya Allah, don't allow them to raise any of their flags. اللهم Free Masjid Al-Aqsa from their hands, Ya Allah. وَارْزُقْنَا صَلَاةً فِيهِ And grant us to pray in Masjid Al-Aqsa. وَوَحُرٌ عَزِيزٌ And it is liberated and sanctified, Ya Rabbi Al-Alameen. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدًا يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّمْ بِرَحْمَتِكَ نَسْتَغِيرٌ وَمِنْ عَذَابِكَ نَسْتَجِيرٌ أَصْلِحْ لَنَا شُؤُونَنَا كُلَّهَا وَلَا تَكِلْنَا إِلَى أَنفُسِنَا وَلَا إِلَى أَحَدٍ مِنْ خَلْقِكَ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنٍ يَا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين